Welcome back. Thank you. And thank you for coming back into the next session. Last session was short, but packed with a lot of thought provoking issues. Before we move on, let's remind each other. Anyone with a question or anyone has something to say? Or if not, can we summarize what we move on? What did we get? Let's begin with Leonard. Leonard, remember it's a, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. What did you get, Leonard? What was the first session about? What were, what were we talking about? If Leonard is not there, okay, there he is. Yes, uh, what I got is that uh, uh, God's plan is to have a uh, dwelling place uh, here on earth. So he has created some steps to, to do that. So from Genesis, uh, uh, the first uh, books of the Bible, those are his uh, steps of the plan. Mm -hmm. So now we are in the session where you are telling us uh, the, first, uh, the first step, how it, it's being done. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. Brian? Yeah, okay. so uh, from the, 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 the earlier session, we also uh, tried to see and look at how we should uh, understand the Bible. Yes. Uh, the Bible cannot be taken literally as it was not meant to save a uh, a literal purpose, but rather a moral purpose. Yes. So uh, you took us through uh, the process of creation to just see how it, it doesn't uh, really, uh, really correlate when we take it uh, very literal. Yes. It's rather a, a metaphor. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. That's very good summary. Yeah. Mm. Lumbuka? I think I think for me what I what what I mostly got was um, you were trying to explain to us the process of uh, creation. Uh, first of all, like uh, Brother Mitema has said, you you began to talk about uh, what's God's purpose, what God is, is purpose for man is that God God wants to do it in the lowest parts of earth and wants to basically manifest himself through man and when he rested he deputized man and gave man the dominion yes. then you also spoke about um how um i think you, you you then began to take us through uh the fact that uh, um the bible we should we should pay attention to 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 heed the word of god not as literal but mm -hmm. that uh the, the Bible or the word is prophecy. The, the first five books being the Torah, um, basically they are like a prophecy. So even the coming of Christ and him being on earth, he came to fulfill the law, that there was nothing new that he practically did that was not previously in the law. Yes. So, which means as we begin to look at the Bible, we need to look at it as, um, uh, as a prophecy and not as uh, not historical, so that we can understand it uh, better. Because you also gave an example when you began to take us through Genesis mm -hmm. one, the creation, like in the beginning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you mentioned that um, for for the word for, for for the Bible to say um, replenish, it means there was a form of there was a form of creation and. Mm -hmm. When, when we say the earth was without form and void, when the Bible says the earth was without form and void, it doesn't mean that was, that was the actual beginning, but there was more like a realignment, a replenishing. Yes. So now you began to take us through what that means mm -hmm. from this one. And I think I, the, the, the session cut where you were trying to explain um, that if we say in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then also that there was light in verse two. How come uh, the sun and the moon only appeared in, in the latter verses? And so you gave us that as an example of saying we should not take the Bible as literal, but those are 
uh, allegories and metaphors. And so we should seek to get the true meaning of what the word is saying and not literally. Yeah, I think for me, that's what I got. So I'm looking forward to the explanation of um, when now God made man in his image, because you, you also brought the, the, the debate among the Jews where they don't believe in the soul and they have their own reasons that they put across. So what, what does it really mean? Maybe probably the last part of my submission is a question then what does it really mean when the Bible says God created man in his own image? Because it cannot be physical, because God is not a man like us. It's not, it's not this physical body. So if we say God created man in his own image, and I think me being a neuroscientist, when we say the soul, there's always even a debate with the students. Like, does this exist? Is the soul in the brain? Is the soul away from the brain? So I'm looking forward to get a deeper explanation on that part. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. So, yeah, I think that those are very good summaries. Let's finish, then we can answer some of the questions since we don't have much time. So, now I will advance another thought. Remember, in the first session, I was showing you one, one story about the creation of God, which all of you have, uh, have summarized so well, where I was saying, let's go into the Bible and look at it not as a scientist or a religious person in let's speak to maybe for now genesis but i'm trying to drive you into a situation where you understand that the bible is not historical it's, it's uh, prophetic the bible is not literal it was not meant to serve a literal purpose but a moral purpose so but for for you to really understand what i'm i'm talking about i want to show you that even genesis itself if you take it literally you are not going to go anywhere I showed you how that the story begins by saying God created the earth and it was without form and void. A void I can understand, but without form, what does that mean? So we went on to talk about those things. We also talked about God creating man in his image. Are we saying, are we saying God is like man? If eyes, nose, and everything. And we saw that even the way God was creating things, the first day God created the light, and it seems to, to, to mean that he repeats that creation in the, on the fourth day, you see, which doesn't add up. Then also, we saw that God began, the first creation with, with which God ever made was vegetation. Then he went to the insects and everything, and then man last. That's what we are trying to, to look at. Now, in this session, I'm going to, to introduce to you another thing which you might not have seen in the Bible. But... The Bible really talks about two creation stories. The creation story is in two. In chapter one of Genesis, it's told in it's told, and and again in Genesis, in the second in, in, in the second chapter of Genesis, it's told again. Now let's now compare these two creations how, how they look like. Then we can begin to understand what I'm trying to tell you. So. We came to Genesis 2 after he was done with, with creation. Genesis 1, 2 verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the, and the earth were finished, and all the host of, the, uh, of them. Verse 2, And on the seventh day God ended his works, which he had made, and he, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. So on the seventh day, God rested. The word used uh, for the word day in the Bible there, the word used in Hebrew is yom, Y-O-M, or Y-O-H-M. It can literally mean, so the day there, if you want to take it literally, it, it can literally mean 24 hour day or just a period of time. Sometimes it can mean a day, time, chronicles, daily, ever, year, or continually. That's the, the meaning of, of that word. So we need to, to begin to understand these things properly. So meaning, now we are on a second day creation story now. I, I think 
Let me take you straight into the second second creation story. There are two stories, like I said. Genesis 2 verse 4 begins to tell the story again. Now let's compare. It says, Genesis 2 4 says, These are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. So in the first creation story, God used words like, let there be. Remember, let there be light. You realize, as you go on, contrasting between the, the two. In the first story, God is speaking things out of, oh, sorry, God is speaking things into existence. Let there be light, let there be water, let there be. But in the second creation story, you realize that uh, it flows like a story. And it's like God is a, is like a sculptor. He's creating things from or things which are already created. It's, created. it's creating things from things which are already created. It's like a sculptor, a sculpture. Okay, 2 verse 4, and says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. Mm -hmm. But, there went up a mist, a mist from the earth, from the earth, and watered the, the whole face of the ground. Seven, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had created. So if you go back to chapter 2, Genesis 2, verse 7, the Bible is, the Bible re reads that uh, God, it changes, the story changes. In Genesis, in the first story, God first created vegetation, then created man. But in the second story, you realize that God first created man and then created the Garden of Eden later. So you notice here it says, before any plants of the fields when on earth God made man. If you remember in the first creation, what, uh, the story, plants were the first to be created. These are a few, the few contrasts of the two stories. Creation story one, God created humans after he, he created everything else. Created, uh, creation story two, God created humans before he created everything else. Sorry, God created, in the first story, God created everything else before humans. And God created the plants before he created humans. But in the second story, God creates first man and then he, he creates the vegetation. The other contrast, if you look at it, is that God created man and woman at the same time in the first creation story, 1 verse 27. Now, if you go into 2 verse 21 to 23, the Bible will show, shows that God created man first, and after that, he created animals, then he created a woman. But in the first creation story, it says he created male and female. Then in the last, in, in the second story, God creates first man, then, then animals, then a woman. Remember, he says he created man and then animals. And then he saw that man was bored, animals are the help me. So he creates a person to remove boredom from man. So, like I was saying, in the first creation story, God just uh, he spoke, and from his word, everything came into existence. In the second story, God had to work in order to create, form human beings from dust, breathe life into them, get a rib from the man to create a woman, etc. So if you go on, you read, you realize that is what is happening. So now, next, God tells the man to work the garden and that he can't eat from the tree of knowledge and evil. And that in the day you eat, he shall surely die. 
2 verse 15. I'm, I'm jumping some of these. You can go and read them on your own. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat. Free, uh, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. But you and me know that the day Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they never died. If we are taking it literally. But that day, they, they didn't die when they ate it. So that's why I'm coming to the, to the point where I'm showing you that the Bible is not literal. It has a moral perspective for it, for it. 18, you go on and go said, it is not good for a man to be alone. Like I said, he created woman after animals in this one, this story. Different, two stories, different meaning. I mean, different um, elaborations. So always, when you're in the second creation story god is using an existing thing to create something new so and then another another one i want you and i to look at is when god chased eve from adam adam and eve it's the story says god removed the rib from adam we've got scientists here i think lumbuka is here and some some religious people say that's why man has the less number of ribs than a woman. But scientifically speaking, a man and a woman have got the same number of ribs. Adam and Eve in reality have the same number of ribs, unlike some stories from religion. They suggest that God removed a rib from Adam. So if you count a man's ribs, they are less by one. It's a lie. In Hebrew, another, uh, another one, if you are being literal, in Hebrew, Adam means man. But when people want to translate it, they use the word Adama, which means ground, which is different from Adam. Adam in, in Hebrew means man. And then they say woman means of a man. But, lit, that's, uh, but if you go literally, in Hebrew, woman is Isha. Then man is ish. So now we must begin to now now let's read the next step. Let us go now and look at man's fall. The same book. I'm trying to show talk to elaborate something. I think which you understand. I explained earlier. Three verse three says, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God's I said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. You go on, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. So meaning, if it's literally, there was a snake, a little snake, and the, when you read the whole story, the whole story says, the snake used to walk on two feet before, and then God cast it, now it, it moves on its belly. And then, the Bible says, when God began to curse, he cursed the, the woman, you, you, have, you have turned in childbirth, that's what we are told according, according to the story. The snake was cursed to move on the belly and eat dust. If there's somebody who has done, uh, who has, who has studied the uh, animal kingdom or zoology, or you can Google, the snake in real life does not eat dust. You understand? That's off already. The snake never eats dust. It is frogs, insects. So if you want to, to, to take it literally. So that's my point. You can go on and read at your own time. So the Bible says, the, then the serpent comes to talk to Eve. Let me find that story. Where the, the serpent is asking Eve, about the tree. Uh, verse, uh, verse 3, chapter, sorry, Genesis 3, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, okay, verse 3, Genesis 3, verse 3. 
But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of, of, of Eden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. So who was lying there between God and the serpent? Literally speaking. It seems like God was lying. If you should read it literally. And the serpent was not in was not lying in this story because when they ate, they never died. Proving the point the serpent says, when you eat, you will not die. Like I said, please, snakes don't eat grass, by the way. I mean, sorry, snakes don't eat dust. So now, another point I'm trying to give is in the second uh, creation story, when man sins, God curses man that when he dies, you you return to the dust. That's kind of picky. Because from what I know, it's not only man who, who, who returns to dust. Because we know that all things, when they die, they all return to dust. Trees, plants, animals. But in the story, it's like it, it was a punishment for just man. So we begin to realize to, un to understand these things. So the two creation story seems to have two different when you look at it in the Bible, when you for people who are experts to tell the stories and their the origin, you realize that these two stories they seem to have different authors in the first instance. They seem to have two authors. It's like the first creation story. If you go also in the uh, in the Bible meaning of the Hebrew words. It looks like these stories were told by two different uh, authors. In the first story, the word for God, which is used, is Elohim, and it's used say, three times. Whereas in the second creation story, the word for God, which is used, Yahweh, and is used for uh, about ten times. So, from what we have read, literal meaning of this Genesis book fails, the test fails. The Bible has, has a non-literal explanation to it. Before we move forward, do we agree that the literal meaning here cannot be seen? Anyone with a question on what I've discussed? Or do we understand? My brother Mwanza, By the way, George. Yes, Pastor. Uh, uh -huh. Pastor, I have, I, have, I have a question. No problem. We have, we have, we have, given, we have given us um, uh, two creation stories eh? in chapter one and in chapter two. Yes. Now, out of the two, which one do we get? Um, the first one is uh, God creates, uh, creates, uh, creates man. Uh, both male and female. Second one again, God creates uh, a male, and again, after that, he creates a woman. So which one? Which one do we get? It seems uh, confusing to me. Eh? Okay. I don't. Know. Yeah. Okay. First of all, uh, before I started telling this this story, uh, have you finished with the question, or you you want to add on still? No, no, just that. Yeah. I was saying that, yes, that. yes. Uh, uh, when, uh, when we opened, I made a statement that the Bible is not a literal book. The Bible is not a historical book. The Bible is a prophetic book. The Bible does not serve any literal purpose. The Bible serves a moral purpose. So I, I wanted to qualify my statement by going into the Bible to show you that the Bible really is the allegorical. It doesn't show things literally. That's why I picked on Genesis, because I know it has a lot of things we can, we can look at. I was saying, if you look at Genesis, Mamwanza, literally, like it's a story, it was happening, it doesn't make sense. Proving to you mm. that the Bible does not tell stories to people to listen to stories. Those things have got meanings. And these are now the meanings as we go on. That's why I was saying, when I explain this to you, and when I start to, to tell you the truth, the way that the Bible is supposed to be ex explained, 
it will become easier for you because then you will understand what I'm talking about. So the two stories are okay. The only thing is that we don't take them literally. They have got a, 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 an a, allegorical understanding to it, a moral understanding to it, which will, as we go on, we will be explaining. So to answer your question, Brahmanda, is, is that the two stories were written by two different people, but they do not serve a literal purpose. They have a moral purpose. If I don't make sense, you can still ask so that I go on to answer you. Does that make sense for now? Of course, as we go on, you, you realize no, it does. It, it, it does. How so? It does. Yeah, also, maybe explain how it, it does make. Mm -hmm. uh, I've understood to say the the, the, the Bible, uh, the way it was written, mm -hmm. was not uh, written for for get to for us to 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 get it as as it is as it says, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it was written in a Garko, some some sort of yes. Mm. So if we, we we go by whatever it says, sometimes we may even get lost in it. Yes, that's that the, the why, point I've gotten. Yes, that's why Brahmanda, in every dispensation, you need a son of man to open up your word. If you go into the book of Osea, Osea all the time, the, the, the Bible will tell him, son of man. Osea was called a son of man for that dispensation. He was one who was breaking the Bible. You know, in Osea's time, if you read Osea's uh, story, is it Osea 3 verse 1? God tells Osea, go and marry a whore, a harlot. Does that make sense? Mamwanda, le Sami, but the Bible goes on to say that that was an allegory showing Osea that Israel has been who is married to God, is doing adultery by worshiping other gods. So we'll, as we go now in the Bible, I begin to show you, just like last Sunday, I, I don't know if you listened to last Sunday's message, the book of Revelation came so much alive to us. To us, pardon, even the book of, of Matthew, on the two feedings, we understood it in a moral or in a prophetic way. It comes out so clear and, and so well. I don't know. Yeah, but does that make sense so, so far? We'll, as we go on, keep listening and keep asking. If I haven't answered, ask again so that we are on the same page. So, Ibrahim Monza, anything else so, yeah. for now? No, nothing at the moment. Okay. Any other person? George, just nothing at the moment, sir. Brother, don't feel like you are a, a stranger here. It's a place where we begin to open our minds into the, the, the true things. So, George, you are welcome. And if you have a question, you are free to ask. No problem. Okay. Who else has a question? Any question? Does this make sense? Moape, do you want to summarize? Before I add the last part. No, I think you can add the last part. Sir. Okay. It makes sense, though. Uh, very much, actually, very much. And um, I think it, it has just given me a whole different perspective and a whole different insight, looking at the way I think the whole scripture has been interpreted to the masses. I really never thought of it from the way you've explained it to say, what chapter one is talking about and chapter two are totally two different things. In chapter one, you've explained to say God is creating things from nothing. And uh, chapter two, he's making. Oh, yeah. The and uh, yeah. we know... The first story and the second story. Yes. And we know for certain that there is actually a huge difference between creating and making. Mm -hmm. So... In chapter two, we see that, okay, he made this out of this. So you can only make something from something that has already been created. 
And uh, we've seen that that was the work that was done in chapter two. And uh, other than that, I think I, I really, really loved on the part when you touched on to say the way the whole scriptures have been actually interpreted. I think it's messed up because if we say the consequence of man sinning was the was for him to return to the dust but we know for certain from your explanation to say or from the explanation of the scriptures rather to say all creatures all creation returns to mother earth at the end of it all mm -hmm. whether it being plants as long as it's a living thing mm -hmm. every the moment it it's its life ceases it goes back to mother earth mm -hmm. so and I, I think it cancels out already the aspect of sin to say, well, that was the reason why man goes to the dust. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's so deep. And I think we don't see, we don't, you can't, wake, you can't just wake up and read scripture and understand it from that perspective. I think it requires, like you said, to say, you need to have the truth in you for you to, to be able to have such knowledge. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question before I just say something irrelevant from this? I, I want us to go out of here, everyone with an understanding. Mm -hmm. Any question? I want everyone to be free, even people who are new. And feel free. George, I will come to you. George, do you want to say something? Do you want to ask anything? Okay, any questions going once? Okay, no questions. So, if we understand this, that the, the Bible is not historical, I'll be very happy because then when I begin, like next Sunday, if I begin to talk about What's happening in Genesis? What's happening there? You begin to open up. It will, it will begin to make you see things in the right way. Because there are a, a lot of things we need to have the true understanding in it. Because like, like I said, at, at the end of the day, there is going to be a victorious mind at the last day, the seventh day, the 7,000th day. I was telling you religion is going it is going because I believe the 7,000 year period is very near. Religion is going, meaning Islam is falling. Judaism is falling. Christianity is, is, uh, is falling. And I think some of these things, you are feeling them in your times. How that you can't even trust men of God anymore. You see? So, we need to understand these things. Because we are going to talk about a lot of things. I've got so much things to talk about, but I need to prepare your mind. Remember, I need to prepare a place where I should put these words. And that place is your mind, your cup. Even Jesus Christ says, before you put anything in this cup, you clean it inside, not from outside. I need to prepare your mind for the things I need to oh, So I think there's, George was having a problem with the, connect, with, uh, the mic. So I'll just unmute him okay. so that um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. things should be Ezra, if I'm not mistaken. So it should be, it's Ezra? Yes, and uh, George's son. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, try to unmute him. Not working. Unfortunately, no. No, I think you can just go ahead, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So anyway, we know it's Ezra. Thank you very much, Ezra. You're welcome. So, yeah, because, you know, we need to reach a level where we begin even now to, to understand what is the purpose of man on earth, how is this happening? You know, sometimes we even need to understand what is the purpose of man. And the, if we want to look at things literally, we'll fail to understand. It's like when a man, someone... People will ask me catchy questions like, do you believe in life, in, in life after death? 
I don't believe in things. I believe in the truth. You see what I mean? All I know is, is that if you're going to talk about life after death, which we, we will talk about it at some point, when your minds are ready, I'll, I'll give you a practical example. What is uh, nine, times, nine times five? Just asking a silly question. Nine, okay, oh yeah. Uh, George is saying he's actually George, not Ezra, but he, he got a link from him. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you very much, George. You're welcome. If you have any questions, if your mic is not okay, you, you can type. Or if you're okay, I, I see there you say that you are okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you can just um, unmute people. Yeah. So things like that. You asking me what what do you believe? I believe the truth. Uh, so then I'll ask you what does the truth say? What is what is what does the truth say? So some of these things we will talk about it. Um, and I need to prepare your mind. I was saying nine times five is what? Nine times five? We are not mathematicians. What is nine times five? <laughs> uh, is it 45? Nine times 45. Five. Nine times five? Yeah. For 45. 45. 45, right? And what is the, okay, nine times five is 45. What is 40 plus five? It's the same, sir. <laughs> so now you're asking me a question. What happened? What, are, what happens when a man dies? It's a story for another day. I'm just probing your mind. I, I want to see if your minds are ready, if they're getting mature. <laughs> You see, so okay. I think uh, uh, time is almost up, sir. Yes. Okay. So, anyone has anything to say? Let's yeah. Let us give people time to one minute to say something. Anything to say? Brian, Bamwanza, Bamtema. Anyone? You want to say something? Say something now. Encourage us. Preach to me. Hmm? Anyone who wants to say something in this last one minute? It would be nice. Dumbuka, you want to say something in the last one minute? No, I think I, I, I can pass for now. Okay. Moape, Brian, um, Leonard, Mwanza. Man of God, Mwanza. I like uh, not this time. Huh? Not, not this time. Next time, probably. Okay, but it, it's making sense, right? Okay. We have got less than, than one minute. Yeah, so we need to be mindful. Because